सो माई टॉक इज गोना बी ऑन द चैलेंजेस दैट वी फेस वेन वी आर प्रेजेंटेड विद द केसेस ऑफ ट्यूबर क्लॉसेस इन अ गवर्नमेंट सेटअप एंड एज यू ऑल नो द कॉमन इशूज दैट वी फेस इज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द सोशल इशू दे आर मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर इकोनॉमिकली कंस्टेंट दे हेल्प फ्रॉम द इंटीरियर पार्ट्स ऑफ द इंडिया सो बिकम अ रेगुलर फॉलो बिकम्स अ इशू फॉर दैम not only this is a social dimension but there are patient related dimension also which is also important and you know this most of the kids are malnourished their nutrition is not so good and that is first that we target always another thing is they are very young and uh, kids uh, who have a immature skeleton cartilaginous body destruction is more they are quite often neglected females elderly patients we see lot of them are immunocompromised and they also have a hiv and the long time evolution and non compliant non compliance with the treatment is another challenge that we face because uh, it's because of both awareness and the lack of education which makes them very uh, difficult with respect to the compliance treatment and the third thing is pathology itself pathology is also i feel is more cruel because that uh, the the treatment they sought is quite late in the uh, disease stage so what we see is a lot of time the disseminated lesions large abscesses atypical presentations late presentations and we do get lot of drug resistance and deformity so i'll i'll keep my talk more of a case oriented so you'll understand better uh, how are we dealing with this kind of a challenges uh, for example this kind of a cervical thoracic lesion with more than three vertebral body loss we commonly see at our age, uh, uh, institution you can see there is a significant kyphosis so this area becomes very difficult to approach upon and they usually miss the bus and if you want to address this particular deformity we really have to go long and fuse them which leads to lot of stiffness also this case uh, cases present late and they have a very uh, poor neurological uh, uh, presentations at the time of uh, the disease itself the other thing is that we see is a lot of time we see a deformity which are hill tuberculosis so they present with a significant thoracic kyphosis which itself can be causing a internal gibbous formation that itself leads to a neurological compromise and this internal salient compressing on a cord itself a challenge and unfortunately we are left with a no option but to do a whole a large surgery where we do a complete excise this vertebral column do the deformity correction and restore the whole column and decrease the uh, cord compression the the uh, we always say there's a adver adversity is always a birth for opportunity and we do get up cases which are very late in their uh, stages so uh we have cases and we published this in io spine global spine which is one of the uh, frequently cited journal and we found that the cases in our study ranging from 5 days after onset of deficit to up to 200 days the presentation and we had decompress and we found a satisfactory result the preoperative neurological outcome was a single most determinant and so the point is that it's never too late and you should always consider a a uh, neurological decompression whenever there's a chance to offer and we should offer a decompression surgery and the results are much good biopsy is already been talked about in detail uh, the point is that at given point of time in km we have almost 5 to 10 cases presenting in our opd with deficit so there's a enormous uh, load that we see and uh, it becomes uh, and our residents are very uh, trained to do a transpedicular fluoroscopic guided biopsy so uh, it's not that i have a radiological bias but uh, as dr bhavin was telling that the size of the needle as a spine surgeon we pass a larger size needle we feel that the tissue yield much better and we do a fluoro fluoroscopic guided uh, biopsy which uh, we we target the lesion so the accuracy is much better and this was also previously pointed out by fellow we send all the spectrum including the fungal uh, 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 culture the negative culture is another challenge that we face in our institute uh, because most of these patients when they are presenting they are already been started on a empirical akt so they are already taking a, a, a biopsy uh, is and we do a biopsy and we send it for a culture but i think already the uh, the the previous speaker has highlighted that the important thing is that they also can detect a dead organism so we should not shy away from doing a biopsy or a culture even if the patient has already been started on a empirical akt third thing is that uh, uh, the mdr cases this is a, a one of the commonest challenge that we face most of these kids have a high risk factors the common factors are usually they are they are very young immature skeleton most of these mdr cases are already started on a previous anti tuberculous treatment they have very as a typical presentation which we'll see in a uh, subsequent slide the most common presentation they see is a multifocal disease you have a cervical thoracic lumbosacral area involvement lot of them have a immunocompromised status and we are in a mumbai is a endemic area so we have very high threshold this 7 year old boy with a significant kyphosis what you can see on a mri is that the d4 is directly touching around the d10 vertebral body so he has lost almost half of his thoracic spine at the age of 7 years and now uh, there's a internal sp spastic paraparesis so what we have to left is we have to go higher up fuse the skeleton 
reconstruct the anterior column as Dr. Samir Dalvi has already highlighted. I will not go into details, but uh, this leads to the, uh, 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 you can postpone the neurological deficit and you can get a good deformity correction with this particular surgery, but understand that he has lost half of the spine at a very early age. This is the result at day 14, three and a half weeks, they become ambulatory and by the end of one year, they become quite functional. We all know that tuberculosis is a medical disease and please remember that the, uh, as uh, Dr. Samir has also highlighted, it's the medical management which should take a precedence and the surgery is reserved for the complication, not for the disease itself. And the tuberculosis has a various wide presentation at our institute it can, and we, the tuberculosis is the go-to differential for us, for any pathology. For example, this young man presented to casualty with a large uh, a back swelling after an assault. Everybody thought this could be a hematoma which has occurred. When we did a MRI, uh, the yeah, so the MRI showed a large abscess which was tracking from the pre-vertebral and paravertebral region and coming in the posterior spine. And he had a fracture of spinous process of the transfer process. So the assault basically fractured the transfer process, whole thing drained out anteriorly and presented like that. We, it, he underwent a proper aspiration and uh, uh, they, he, they healed completely. So there's a various atypical presentation that we see and this we could Yeah, so this we could uh, uh, present as a mimicker. So we always keep that the tuberculosis is a, uh, a great mimicker. And we often see that the patients with a lymphoma leukemia present like a tuberculosis picture. And what we think is a tuberculosis could be a, a hematological malignancy. So psoas sepsis is not always a tuberculosis. And one should always also think of hematological reasons. Another interesting case, this young kid presented recently multiple discharging sinuses. Uh, uh, you can see there's a scarring which is very typical. When we did a x-ray, we saw that there's a destruction happening in the lumbosacral area. When we did a MRI, I was surprised to see a, a, a large mass which was sitting in the lumbosacral region. When we took a detailed history, they gave a history that he had underwent an IND drainage and the multiple times the cotton was introduced in the, uh, in the uh, field and, and that is what they treated this as a simply IND abscess and whole thing migrated in the anterior to the thickal sac. This is the MRI which you can see this large mass sitting. Uh, again, uh, uh, this, these are the representative images, so you can uh, appreciate there's a significant destruction of the sacral spine which has happened uh, in this part. And, and if you see the preoperative MRI image, there's a cl cl classical pre-vertebral abscess and this patient was uh, uh, started on an AKT preemptively somewhere else and then he presented to us with this uh, large mass. When we did a... Uh, so this is the images and this was the extent. We took the patient, uh, this was the intraoperative image, so we had to go from the L5 area. We excavated that complete lesion. Uh, the whole thickal sac was added to the anterior spinal region. This was the mass, the cotton mass, which we had to extract. This latter also came out positive with both fungal culture as well. So uh, then the histopathological picture is also showing towards the aspergilloma as well. So there could be a concomitant infection in the both pathology and what we did a debridement and we have passed the cement, uh, the stimulant insertion in the same area. Now conservative treatment has already been highlighted, but the challenges that we face, the conservative is the mainstay of treatment and we require a multimodal uh, 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 support like in the form of pulmonary medicine, the physiotherapist, the occupational therapist because rehabilitation is very important. The challenge is that this particular multimodal treatment is given to the patient when they are in-house. This same treatment should be given to them uh, following a discharge because that is also important and it's a continuum of the treatment. Malnourishment, I already highlighted, these are from socio-economically challenged uh, strata. So they have a lot of issue with the nutrition. Drug and brace compliance is a rampant problem. They don't follow the bracing, so that's another issue. So we have to have a regular follow-up, and I feel here the socioeconomic support and paramedic support, especially at the primary level, is going to be very important. You can see this MRI. We have a common presentation like this, the patient presenting with a cervicothoracic cox, thoracolumbar cox, and a lumbosacral cox in a one setting. And you can't go on instrumenting the entire spine and just fix with a screw. So it's very important that one has to manage the conservative uh, treatment very uh, properly. In KM, I beg to disagree that the medical management should be left to ID. No, we should know how is the medical management because you are going to see patients daily. And at that point, we manage the, uh, our own cases. MDR cases, we do take a help of chest TV physician. And uh, other thing is, K, uh, say, uh, KEM, we see a lot of cases which are presenting at a late stage and a lot of them refuse treatment out of their socio-economical challenge status. So we get to see a classical natural history of uninstrumented spine. And I'll show you a few examples like that. So this patient, again, you can see D10, D11, Cox, 
uh, this is the uh, uh, x x-ray taken in the month of uh, august uh, 20 uh, he didn't uh, seek a treatment again this is the x-ray at november 20 you can see the february the lesion started collapsing and by the end of may it healed an uneventfully so there's a hardly any minor curve which doesn't need a instrumentation and same thing was highlighted by dr samir as well so if you do a proper bracing if you give a proper medical management you also take care of the nutrition the results is going to be very uh, good so that is something which we have to keep in mind the another thing is a lumbar cox we do see a lot of lumbar cox we know that the lumbar cox has a thickle sac so there's no much deficit dense deficit that we see classically in a thoracic cox so these patients present late and what we did is we did a, a study in this case is what happens to these patients uh, when we don't do any instrumentation because if you have to do instrumentation in this case for example i have to go two level or one level above one level below and i end up fusing law and sacrificing a lot of motion segments whereas this this is healed like this you may see that the x-ray is not so good looking but uh, the radiological parameters may not be so favorable but believe me the osteoarthritis disability score is much better and the the classical sagittal parameters like pelvic incidence the pelvic tail the sacral slope were designed for an adult degenerative deformity where we didn't had a healthy disc adjacent to the deformity whereas what we see is a very healthy disc they are very compliant and they can compensate very well so these patients in spite of getting a lumbar kyphosis which is minimal they will tolerate and they have a very eventually good outcome so i i i want young ones to understand the conservative treatment is equally important we don't have to instrument every lumbar spine because when you instrument lumbar spine you end up losing a lot of flexibility and these patients especially from the poor class wants to do ground level activity and if you go, go and end up using the sacrum the lumbar flexion the forward flexion becomes restricted and this we are, this is being already submitted for publication uh, and the important point is that the, we should try the conservative management first the surgery is reserved for a severe deficit and we do get this kind of a patients for example this patient when presented was offered a, uh, a bracing he didn't turn up and in a span of three months you can see the sim significant destruction the whole mri was this was like three months back after three months there's a translation instability deficit cord impingement cord signal changes complete paraparesis so it's very important that we have to have a regular follow-up of these patients another challenge that we see in km or in a, a municipal setup is that the patients being operated outside they do biopsy but they don't get anything they start the patient on a, a, a empirical akt the patient is been instrumented like this you can see there's an inadequate fixation and patient has been referred at this stage he's a 26 year old male lone breadwinner for the family and complete paraparesis with this deformity again you, when we did a mri uh, after this surgery we could see a soft tissue abscess as dr bhavin uh, highlighted we usually do a biopsy we call this as a presumptive tuberculosis and there's a very good definition for presumptive uh, uh, tuberculosis in a national program you can see that ct scan showing a significant void and the implants are completely malpositioned uh, whenever and we did a biopsy we saw that there is a rifampicin resistance we already learn whenever we see a rifampicin sensitivity we don't stop we send for a first line lpa if there's a rifampicin resistant, we send for both first line and second line LPA. So that's why we get the uh, whole uh, the uh, uh, pattern of the disease. And this was done for this patient. We found entire uh, uh, sensitivity for all both first line and second line AKT. The chest TV fusion was roped in. We did went inside back. We instrumented it properly. We did an anterior interbody fusion. You can see that the CT scan showing a complete fusion at the end of construct. And he was completely ambulatory again. So if you follow a proper treatment protocol, you are going to get a good outcome. Growing spine affection kids is another challenge that we see 10 year old female difficulty in walking she was she has taken equity for six months progressive deformity for five years didn't sort came with a discharging sinus large gibbous formation on the back when we did a, a x-ray you can see there's a significant kyphosis from t9 to l3 so her t9 is touching the l3 vertebra significant destruction 127 degree of corpse angle when we did a mri you can see there's a significant internal salient compressing on the cord we did a, a proper culture. Fortunately, she was rifampicin sensitive. We started on a, a treatment. Uh, the challenges were the six vertebral body loss. So this is what we see when we do a, a surgery in these patients and they already taken an AKT. This is how the whole caches material gets kind of organized. And we uh, support with a posterior column. This is a spinal uh, cord and this is the posterior wall which is kept intact and whole tissue was excavated. Then we did an anterior column reconstruction of the mesh cage. Another problem is that we have now roots which are traversing like this and it becomes very challenging to pass that cage uh, from the backside uh, between the now roots. So we do uh, use a expandable cages like that. 
the finally we did a instrumentation the uh, the deformity was significantly reduced we could restore her trunk height we could restore the uh, kyphosis and we incorporate the whole sinus in our incision so that whole thing uh, could be uh, managed in the same go so it's it becomes a challenging that the problem doesn't stop here these are the small kids who are last half of the thoracic lumbar column and if you can see that the two years post op see the breathing of these kids so uh, predominantly abdominal breathing same kid after four years of surgery predominantly uh, abdominal breathing you can see his limbs are uh, symmetrical but the trunk is shortened so for positive time i'll go forward yeah so uh, the other problem is that the reduced chest wall compliance which causes a restriction of pulmonary function disease so we are already studied and we have published this that there's a significant pulmonary function compromise in these patients the problem doesn't stop at uh, pits there's adult patients with a discharging sinuses again lumbar cox significant destruction we did a lumbopelvic reconstruction again l2 touching the sacrum so it's a challenging uh, for this this is how the cord is always compressed with the internal gibbous these are the now routes through which we have to navigate and reconstruct the entire column this is what we do the reconstruction you get a fusion at the end and last the tv in pregnancy is another thing you can see this is a young mother with a baby in the womb uh, but a dorsal a cox there was a talk 32 weeks whether to terminate pregnancy or the do a surgery uh, she was paraplegic we took and do the, did the surgery in the latter position this is a improvisation of cervical spine foam which we supported the abdomen uh, at the end of suture removal she could uh, stand with a support uh, with a walker Uh, finally she delivered a healthy baby she could uh, restore got a complete neurology normal back to the final this thing and the complications like a severe uh, chest complication bed sores uh, young kids with a tuberculosis knee with a flexion deformity is already common we have to depend on the bracing and casting as a old age uh, technique the another problem which was not discussed is the duration of att in a km we have a in house pet scan support so a lot of time we do depend on sv max value because we get a lot of drug defaulters and we see that and we already uh, published this results uh, post operative rehabilitation we we have in house otpt but the post operative rehabilitation at the house the where the patient is going to reside is going to be important uh, the drug defaults are very common this patient again one drug sensitive two months complete destruction didn't take akt finally managed with the Uh, AKT and MJPGY and Ayushman Bharat are the game changer. A lot of uh, economic burden has been taken care. The next uh, speaker will speak about it. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, at the end, final conclusion for the talk is that the multi multidisciplinary approach is going to be very important. We have to depend on the local centers. It's important to address the malnourishment. Use of government schemes has made a very significant difference. Aggressive rehabilitation is going to be important. Don't just operate and leave the kid. Do a regular follow-up. Do a regular physio and occupational follow-up. And in a kids, keep the future growth disturbance in the mind. Thank you much, very much for your patient listening.